Hi, Lawrence. It's such a pleasure to, to meet you. Oh, thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have so many questions. I actually like the questions we sent you were really just um, initial ones. And we had so many spinoffs because this movie really struck a chord with me. Um, I was best friends with my grandmother. And in her later years, she had to go to a nursing home here in Canada. And currently I have uh, an aunt who's in a nursing home in Hong Kong um, oh. and her husband has just passed away. So it's only her left. So when I watched it, uh, the, the screener, it just felt like it just hit me in the heart. So thank you so much for creating this film. Um, oh, wow. just a little. So let's warm up a little bit about the movie. Um, you know, we know that you studied in Vancouver. So we have a very close can uh, Canadian tie and we wanted to know, you brought it to the Vancouver International Film Festival last month. How did it feel to be back in Vancouver showing such a powerful film? It's, it's, very, it's very special for me, actually. Uh, I remember when I, uh, I get the phone call from, from uh, the film company and then uh, uh, the staff told me uh, I got selected in the Vancouver Film Festival. Mm -hmm. At first, I was so calm. Actually, then I, I went to 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 take a shower and and and, and stuff, and then I I actually start crying a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 funny. It's very funny because uh, the venue of the the festival is actually where I graduate. Like literally, like not just the city, but the exact location, the venue. So. Um, I remember like there there's still a lot of friends there uh, i remember I, I invited my homestay family to to came and 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 support my film to watch my film and and i remember back in the days when i was uh still a film student and uh i was uh struggling and and uh, whatever <laughs> yeah and then uh i i had my like you know like those student projects or or, or some like homework or like final year project i i I always showed it to them, like all my friends in Vancouver, and 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 they always supported and gave me so much love. So it's very special to me to 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 bring my own film and back and and I have like high school education and film school education. I spent five years in in Vancouver actually, and and yeah, it's very special for me. And and it's it's like um uh it's something that I would never forget actually wow well, that's very very special and uh we can explore that story even further <laughs> after this interview but congratulations that that feeling must be incredible vancouver is such a great um you know hub for uh creativity there's a few arts organizations that have started you know since you graduated there not just in film but in other arts yeah and I went there to visit and it's so meaningful so maybe we can talk about that some more for some collaborations later um sure so tell us more about like the script. So you wrote in broad daylight five years ago, right? How was that journey in those five years? And were there any major changes uh, made to the screenplay during, you know, the, the phase of writing in the five years? Uh, like people always ask me, like, what is the reason behind, like, uh, why do I need five or why do I spend five years to write a script? To be honest, the main reason is actually no one's going to invest <laughs> in the film. I <laughs> I always said like I wish it only took me like five months and I can start shooting my film, but the the truth is no. Like it's so hard to get it financed, and it's not like the film company like reject me right away. But uh, to be honest, they actually like the script, but it's so tough for them. I think there there are so many like commercial or business reasons behind uh, 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 for them, and I I had. Uh, I think it's all like yeah, five film companies I I, I asked it for and and my producer uh, Derek E uh, supported me a lot like since day one like five years ago, uh, uh, so he 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 introduced me to a lot of uh, f uh, film companies actually, but mm -hmm. and yeah, it, it took five years and people people actually asked me to is it do do I think is it too late to to present my film in two thousand twenty three and I do not think so. I think it's actually the right timing for, for me to present a film. Uh, you know, like somehow, like there are some scenes we didn't actually change the lines or the, the setup or the plot at all. Mm -hmm. But if I shot it five years ago, um, it's going to be different. Uh, my mindset, it's going to be different, even the actors and the, the whole world is actually different. Like after all these five years, we we went through 
a lot of things and 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 now we are living in such a wide world a, 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 like all the mess like we went through i think we got a lot of feelings in it so um we put it in it too so it's not it's not just about the script but also the 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 mindset i think yeah we as a uh creator like a filmmaker or the actors we we have been changed it yeah yeah i think so too when i when i when i was watching it i felt that what great timing like the fact that you had written it five years ago but you know rewind five years ago 2023 minus five is 2018 um everyone's mindset is completely different yeah. And I think yeah. after going through such a ravaging time, but also, you know, having time to digest all the turmoil that I think the city has been through, um, yeah. to have it hit people's hearts in 2023 was such perfect timing. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's made its way like around the world. I, I mean, I had eyes on it on Instagram even before um, we were speaking to Elium Films about it um, because it's just such a compelling theme and a necessary one to discuss which brings me to the next question like how did you you know make this come to life in terms of communicating with the actors like how do you how do you have people who you know because a lot of celebrities and many of them are very um very much veterans right and doing very well you know how do they come to terms with the script as raw and as rabbit like you know as riveting as this one and be able to portray these characters in the scenes and like you know are there scenes that you remember the most in terms of like that really got you when you were directing? Uh, I think at first, uh, I think all the actors, including the extras or, or, or yeah, all the actors are very professional. And uh, we did a lot in the preparations. We talk a lot, we, we discuss we, we discuss a lot. We, we, we had some like very great discussions and um, we try to portray the story in a way that we're not gonna ride on anyone, you know, like, because it's based on true events and and the actual people are are actually suffering so like how can we we have a metaphor like we don't want to put these sufferings to a museum to to put to present to to like you know what i mean like we, we don't want to do that but instead of that but we we try to uh, to to understand more the 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 feelings behind all these events we, we're not trying to uh, rebuild or recap the truth behind it. Well, not like that kind of movie, but it's more uh, about feelings. It's more about um, the emotions behind all the things. So uh, when when I talk to all the actors, I think they they knew exactly what it is, and and I think the story itself uh, had a meaning to to all of them. They are like extremely focused and and concentrated during the set. So I don't have to be like 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 using like like crazy methods or whatever like to to talk to them they, they're so focused actually we, our team spirit is very good uh during uh the shooting yeah it was um i thought it was casted really really well and you're right about the emotions i felt that although you know in broader media it's um you know it, it, when they had to summarize it in an elevator pitch or in a short paragraph it talks about oh your movie uh reflects on journalism in hong kong and around the world which is under threat it talks about you know nursing home life but like the, you're right the emotion is just bubbled up throughout the whole movie and you know every single layer was nuanced right so you covered aspects of not only the actual residential home itself but you actually covered the relationship between families right um different yeah. reasoning for people putting someone into a, a nursing home right and it, you know many moments whether it's grandfather and granddaughter or you know somebody without family or somebody who's mentally disabled like there's so many things that um you, you you just weaved in there. It was so detailed and it was so emotionally detailed that I felt like, you know, this was just pure magic on the screen because all these famous actors, but you don't feel like, like you said, you're not, you're not there to watch one star. You're just there experiencing all the emotions. I thought that was fabulous. Uh, really talking about, talking about magic. Uh, I remember the scene, uh, you know, like that, that, that's a scene that I, I think I will remember forever. <laughs> Uh, when I was on a set, uh, actually, is the ending, the the reigning scene when uh, David Chang, uh, uh, we call him John Go in Chinese, but but his name also is called David. Yeah, uh, David Chang and and Jennifer Yu. At, at the end, um, uh, the line uh, uh, Jennifer went to to uh, 
uh, uh, she she was looking for for Dave, uh, David Chang and 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 at, at last uh, David David uh, gave the cap uh, uh, heads cap to to Jennifer. I don't want to to to, to, to spoil anything, but but that yeah. scene what was it wasn't in the script at all. It was only that line. It's the main message. Uh, 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 we, we put it in uh, when we do a right thing and, and never regret that scene at that line I, 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 it's like a theme message for us but then uh during the shoot uh we, we're having a rehearsal uh david uh uh he he got us like he, he popped up his mind like because when he saw jennifer uh uh like get so wet like and messy in, in the rain and then he he he, he really wants to take care to, uh, uh, of her. And that's why he gave his like valuable cap. It's like his treasure, right? Like, give it to her. It's a little design in it. At first, I think it's maybe a little bit too much, but uh, I talked to David and then, yeah, maybe we can try it. And then when he tried it, I remember my, my cameraman and my, my one of the actor, uh, uh, and some of the staff the crew, they just cry during their like, like on on set. It's it's crazy, and and I I knew exactly that was like a it's nothing scripted and 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 planned it, but it's a magic in 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 in, in cinema. And and end up uh, I saw it on screen, and and it's it touched me a lot. Like it's. I don't know how to explain it. That 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 moment. Uh, I remember some uh, filmmakers uh, uh, taught me, like experienced filmmakers taught me, like when we shoot a movie, we need to shot uh, shoot a moment. We, we have to make sure there's a moment in the movie. I think that was the moment for for In Broad Daylight. I, I I love it so much, and and I think David Chan nailed it. It's so great. Oh, it was wonderful. I think in in hearing you describe it. What, what I feel is like it balanced out the other, which I won't spoil it for the audience yeah, who hasn't yeah. watched it, but there's another very raw scene, right, um, in the movie where, you know, as a reporter, Jennifer Yu discovers that big moment, right, where she yeah, has the... Yeah. I, I couldn't breathe while watching that moment, and I yeah. also had my breath in the moment that you mentioned, and I think those two are very well balanced because, you know, during the film, um, Jennifer Yu's mom says, right and, yeah. and and yeah. everyone sees you as useless but actually david chang said gun that way he he yeah. actually kind of like re rewrites that a little bit because actually we do need the blessing we stand on the shoulders of our elders right and we do need yeah. somebody who lived life and with experience to tell us no you did the right thing because in a society yeah. where things are all changing and you don't have your footing you still need someone to tell you that so i felt like it was so well balanced um and wow, like what a moment that, you know, your whole crew created together, inspired by David. Yeah, um, yeah thank you. Now, <laughs> like how, is, how important is it for you? You know, you, you exposed um, to a greater audience who, let's say, um, whether they're immigrants in Canada or other diasporas around the world, and they don't keep up with, let's say, Hong Kong news, right? Um, to some people, this might be the first time um, they've seen something like this, shedding light on, you know, the inner workings of the nursing homes in Hong Kong. Uh, mind you, funny enough, right now, there's another drama being broadcasted in Hong Kong. And the part about the nursing home also just popped up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard about it. I didn't watch it, but I heard about it. It's well-timed, actually, for, for us Canadian yeah. audience, well-timed. Yeah. Um, yeah. How important is it for you as a director, as a creator? How important is it for you to create, you know, culturally relevant and socially impactful stories? I know in one of your interviews you mentioned that's not the ultimate goal, but I feel like you just gave it a big punch, like you you did it, right? So how important is it to you? I think I still believe the power of cinema or films. Uh, in my childhood or like when I was growing up, I watched a lot of films and I got, I learned a lot of things in, in movies and I got educated a lot in movies. There were like so many movie lines or dialogues or like my life models. So I think I'm lucky enough to, to like back in the days I was just an audience and now I can make a movie and I should be thankful and gratitude to, to have this chance. So when I have this chance to make a movie, I really want to make something that can be like, like hit impact or, or maybe somehow I can influence 
someone, at least maybe one person in this world, then then I I would be happy. I think so. I I really treasure this chance to 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 make it. I actually like doing this five years after I I shot my TV series uh, two years ago in Geek We Trust is comedy. People ask me like, oh. Is it because of the success of and Geek We Trust? So I got a chance to to make this film. Actually, no. People people just keep asking me. Maybe you can just do comedies and never think about to do doing this such an intense movie. Like never think about it. It's too dark and nobody gonna watch it. Nobody gonna care about it. Uh, somehow deep down, like I I put it on hold, but I never f- give it up. Actually, I. Somehow I have faith in this project. I don't know why. There wasn't any like logical reasons behind it, but but maybe it's just there are like like a feelings in it. I I really think that I can make it one day. Maybe five years later. Maybe seven years later. Maybe ten years later. But I really want to make this film to to it. It sh- there must be a meaning in in the city. So like finally I can make it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Now, like when you were making it, um, I mean, once you, you know, in any kind of art and process, right, thinking through making is is just how the engine works, right? So sometimes you make it and then something comes up. Sometimes you already planned it, <laughs> excuse me, and it happened. What was the major themes for you when you made it? Like, what was the main message in the beginning? And then what happened after that? Like, what other messages came out from it? <laughs> like, um, people in Hong Kong now, like, always want to talk about hope and kindness and they can see uh like a kind uh like yeah kindness in in movies but to me we don't want to make it like a propaganda like we really want to explore what is a hope like 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 what is hope to me or what is hope to people and i really think that hope is an attitude instead of like a birthday wish or like a Christmas wish you just make a wish and you never thought it's gonna happen some people like after watching it say um well, uh, why don't you make like a happy ending film in in in, in the, like in the movie or at the end? But to me, I think I do uh, install hope in in the movie. But it's just a different perspective to see what it's hope. To me, um, I think there are some people like journalists or like the social workers or or there are some people keep trying or keep doing things to to wish the world or to make the world better but most of the time they they fail actually they can't see the the changes and and to me i think that um those people are are, are, are the hope actually like even though they can't see the bright future but they, they they keep doing it they keep moving forward they keep pressing on i think this attitude is the hope we need or the city need for i don't know yeah there's just something i really want to say about it in, in the movie instead of i just make a like a false hope like a like a happy ending in, in in the movie world and and people watch it people feel happy for like one or two days and then they forget everything yeah i i really don't want to make this kind of film <laughs> maybe one day maybe next time but not this one that's so great i mean it's so nice to hear it from you that the deepest message that you know you you set out to create was hope um you know when you first on the surface level you know it's easy to pinpoint like oh yeah you're standing up for journalism standing up for you know maybe some nursing some like there's a different many different characters in the film that have struggle right it's not just the jennifer Yu's character it's 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 everybody in, in fact even the um you know even the nursing home residents right talking about death um those who you know the whole thing but i think what you created does have that like you know, very substantial feeling of hope inside it. And that's just truly wonderful. Now, your your movie touches on themes that like, it talks about hope, but also it talks about seeking justice inside, right? Like, um, and you've toured this movie extensively in the past, you know, few months in, in different cities, like, and you've met different audiences. Um, how do you think these universal themes resonate with audiences of various cultural backgrounds, especially today, right now? Like, you know, since this thing has launched recently, there's been war. There's been, you know, a lot of like innocent lives lost in else other places. There's been a lot of immigration to Canada, right, from Hong Kong. Like, there's so much going on. Um, you know, how do you think 
like your work in terms of like help, helping people see that seeking justice and giving people hope is important. How does it resonate with the world today and other audiences that you've met? I think seeking justice is like, a, it's a global theme. Like uh, everyone have their own problem in their own city or their own culture. I, I, I went to, I went to New York, I went to Chicago, I went to Vancouver, I went to Tokyo, I went to Malaysia. They, it's a very Hong Kong local story, but somehow we actually all connected. They, they understand the, the, the message behind it. And even though they're a language barrier, but they can still understand it. They, they, they have their own problems in the city. And, uh, especially in, I think North America, they, they, like you guys, actually like going through a lot too uh how, how can i say like even though like uh it's not just about justice i think the the journalists like over the world they are facing the the sort of the same challenge at first five years ago i was thinking it's only like the newspaper uh uh were, were fading that nobody gonna watch newspaper anymore and everything switched to the digital uh journalism and now even digital uh, uh, journalism, it's, it start collapsing. People are start questioning about the value of uh, truth, the value of the truth. Do people care about truth anymore? Are there any values in, in, in seeking the truth? I think that is the more <laughs> important questions. And uh, people are less patient than before, and we only want to see or watch any like gimmicks gimmicky stuff or or crazy headings juicy stuff but people are starting to to forget about the the true value about seeking for the truth so i think that's the main question or the message uh through all of this film festival journey and 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 i went to a lot of countries and cities and and they they can all relate to to their own culture actually yeah yeah for sure come to toronto <laughs> uh, we yeah I, I wish you <laughs> <laughs> um you know i think it's it's so powerful what you created in fact um because it wasn't i would say it's very authentic and i think the idea of seeking truth and as you know as an audience member where you can see the um, as, as an audience member and an editor i can see that you have an optimism in your work even though you know you expose something that's quite dark but I don't feel like the film, um, you know, went all the way to just be a dark, you know, subject matter. You know, there's been plenty of films lately where it's just, you know, let's say a murder case and it's done, right? It's, it's yeah, something, yeah. right? Or there's entertainment, right? It's made into a comedy. But what you've created here is just such a factually true, you know, based on true facts, but yet emotionally um, nuanced, um, culturally relevant piece. When I say culturally, not just to Hong Kong, but to like globally. Globally. Global. <laughs> how do you care for somebody who's needing depend you know depending on you how do you how do you deal with the housing crisis right that's that's not a topic only for hong kong anymore that's like everywhere yeah. right you've hit like every single point and to me i i i get shivers i got shivers when i watched it because it reminded me of the power of parasite um the korean oh, okay. film a couple years yeah. ago and i wouldn't be surprised if this film got nominated for an oscar for you know best foreign film because i i feel like it was so well done um the use of um you know that even the titling right and the tastefulness of what you did there with broad daylight and then the way you use light to portray like whether it's there was like damp scenes dry scenes but you you use the light and dark to really like artistically bring out the idea of truth and hope and I, I was so touched by it so so let me ask you do you have do you have any hopes of like you know bringing this to that international stage in terms of awards like do you think that have people been talking to you already about um you know getting recognized at that level uh, i think i think my main goal is to reach more people like to to different cultures in different cities and and, and i actually didn't think any <laughs> like I, I i have no idea so but uh uh I think it's good enough for me to 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 travel to a lot of cities and went to a lot of film festivals and talk to those filmmakers, and especially when I can I can went back to Vancouver. It's as I say, it's very special for me. So I I didn't think of any awards. To me, it's 
I, I've been uh, the H Hong Kong Film Awards Creative Committee for like a couple of years. And I mean, I'm happy for this role, but uh, to, to be part of it because uh, um, my producer, uh, Darren E, uh, he's a chairman of Hong Kong Film Awards. But I know the rules and I know all that these kind of it's, I mean, if, I, if we can get any awards and, and we will be happy, but if we didn't get anything, I, it's okay for me because I, to be honest, I'm proud to, to have this film present and, and, and I'm so happy that the movie brought a lot of very good discussions and, and, and people, people really want to talk about Dibley how to make it better, how to, to, to make a better system. And, and I think all these discussions and, 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 and all these conversations are, are the best result for us instead of all those awards. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy to get awards, but, but yeah. it's okay. It's not like a, like a must for me, for us. Yeah. Well, for an audience member and as a Canadian, I hope you get them. Not because I know you don't, you know, obviously as a, somebody with your depth, you don't need an award to validate your work at all. Right. But the world <laughs> is shallow. And I feel like I hope it goes on to compete because um, it would bring to light to so many more people. Because once you get an award, people start looking that didn't weren't looking. Right. And True. people <laughs> looking at this film because it is so good. Right. It is so deep. And it's so um, relevant for today in any society, any culture. Um, it is, you know, something that the glo the entire world should be watching. And of course, we're proud that you came and studied at the Vancouver Film School. Um, you know, my my family was from Hong Kong and I, w I was born here. But, you know, it's nice to see those connections. So my last question would be, you know, I noticed Jennifer, you in the story reference that, oh, God, I found like, uh, you know, when they asked yeah, her where yeah, she came yeah. from. Yeah. So being in Vancouver and then also growing up in Hong Kong. Um, did Vancouver give you anything um, in terms of just like being, you know, culturally Canadian or just in the context that in influences your style and influences your storytelling um, at all? Like, is there anything that you have to share to our audiences before we wrap up? Uh, I think when I was in a film school, I, I, um, I think over 50 percent of the students are from over the world, like international students and and. Like some of my best friends, I, I knew it there. I knew it in the film school. I, I met them in the film school, and we 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 joke about movies. We talk about movies. We joke about movies, and and those days are very like good times for, for me. And and it's not just about movies, but we can. It's like a culture like culture jam. Like we we all jam it together, and I can because back back in the days I was just in Hong Kong, but in Vancouver, it's the first time I can see the world. Mm -hmm see different people from different culture it's it's a culture shock to me and and i learned a lot there and uh compared to hong kong i think uh uh how can i say i think canadians care about humanity more you know what i mean like um uh, in hong kong sometimes like people are too smart sometimes in, in, in a bad way i mean like like they they only care about money and stuff and and it's too cold sometimes. Uh, I remember when I was childhood, I, I had that feeling. And then I, I went to Vancouver, I studied. People were so nice to me and, and friendly, especially my homestay family and, 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 and the friends I met there. They, the, the only thing I remember is support and love. And, and it, it, it molded me, it shaped me this way, I think. And, um, and then after I, 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 I went back to Hong Kong. I, I carry all those core values or 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 how do I see I, I think I got a different perspective to see the world, but not just like uh uh the the perspective I had before in Hong Kong. I think it's too narrow. So uh yeah, I learned a lot and and thank you for it. I think it's just the support and love to me. It it's I remember I remember a lot, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that spirit you can feel in your film. Um, you can feel the, a little bit of that, like, positive, like, that love and the idea of, like, community. I can't pinpoint what it is, but I think it might be the approach to storytelling, the way the story was unfolded, and all the nuances. It felt very palpable for Canadians. Like, it felt like, I think a lot of Chinese Canadians will receive your film very, very well because it, they get it um, to the very deepest of the core. Not only because they still have family in Hong Kong and there are issues, obviously, right? But these issues are here as well. And we all very, 
very much care deeply about it, right? And all 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 the galas here for nursing homes, um, you know, always receive you know very good support. And um, no, but it's so great to hear that you know Vancouver shaped you and gave you a different you know perspective yeah. of the world. Um, yeah. To round, let, let me let me phrase it in that way. Um, I remember when I was in Vancouver, uh, people never ask only for like like when I do something. I think I should ask, like, what is the meaning behind it instead of what is the result behind it? That's what I learned in Vancouver. Um, in all those meanings, sometimes we, we won't get a good result. Maybe we, we, maybe uh, we get nothing. But it's if it's in a good meaning, it's meaningful things or, or, or anything that's good for for the world, maybe then we should do it. Something like that. You know what I mean? Like, like that's very Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian, but it's also very creative industry, right? It's the process. Yeah. The process, yeah. the, yeah. the process, the process counts. It's not just yes, about yes. like the results. So and how you do it, how you approach it. So anyway, t- we're out of time now, but thank you so much, Lawrence, for speaking thank with you, us today. I hope you come to Toronto for a stop. I'm sure no Patricia and the Living Films team would love to have you and we would love to host you um, and just share your work with so many more um, people here because it is truly such an incredibly touching film and so well done artistically. Um, Thank you. <laughs> everything down to the poster, you know, everything down to the, even the you know is so well done so congratulations to you and to the team and to Derek and all the actors and the crew um yeah and and thank you for your time today it's so precious yeah thanks for having me thank you Uh, I hope the film just tears around the world and shows people um (laughs) a bit of that hope thank you thank you thank you thank you so much thank you bye-bye okay bye